So I've, I've been in this spot no less than half a dozen times. Let's pretend like I know all about it and I'm not reading this off of uh, Atlas Obscura because I don't know anything about it. I just go there and I take pictures. So the Vale of Kashmir is a really beautiful spot. Great place if you want to go and relax and do nothing. And if you want to, you want to take pictures of birds, uh, butterflies, chipmunks, squirrels. Uh, there's other stuff there too, I'm sure. There's a lot of birders, not a lot, uh, compared to the usual amount of birders walking around, which is at zero. There's a lot. So the Vale of Kashmir, if you look it up, online. It'll tell you to go in from the northern part of Prospect Park. Uh, no, try to go in from the Lincoln Avenue uh, entrance because it's a nice little trek. You kind of take the little side trails up and um, you're right off the main drive, which people use for like exercise and they're cyclists and joggers mostly. So if, you know, it's, it is a nice walk up to it and you see a little bit more of the park. Uh, Prospect Park is a beautiful place. It's got lots of little nice spots worth checking out, great for photos. Um, I mean, I take morning walks there because I'm lucky enough to do so. I have a 12 pound baby strapped to my chest. It's uh, super wonderful. <laughs> I'm not really like a nature or a bird photographer. It's like street and whatever else I can get and not even street that much these days. But yeah, this this is what I took with me. This was shot over two days. The video was the S1, the Panasonic S1. And the photos are the M240. I did it over two days because I can't really carry two cameras. So the veil used to be like fountains. And then when the park was redesigned in the 1890s, they covered it with balustrade. Um, they don't work anymore. It's really overgrown and a lot of stuff is like broken down and grown over. And it looks like uh, some ancient gardens or something that got taken back by nature. And it's something very unusual for the middle of, not quite the middle of Brooklyn, but the middle of Brooklyn. Um, and, you know, I had a great time getting stills the first day. So I decided to go back with the S1. So the best time to go, I would say, is early in the morning. The M240 is, gets a little bit of hate, but um, it's probably the most affordable from full frame Leica that's not an M9. And honestly, I think M9, the M9 is super duper overrated. When it comes to just walking around and, and taking pictures, it's hard to find something better than a rangefinder. Like manual shooting, which is slow and deliberate, but at the same time really fast because you have to worry about less stuff and it is still different than like an, a Fuji X100 or something. Uh, 240s are also dropping in price right now. It's a good time to get one. You can get yourself a used M9, M8, M240. Uh, they're just gonna keep dropping in price, especially with like the M11 or whatever coming out. And you'll do fine for years and years. Leica's rangefinder system, fortunately, is not something where you have to be concerned about the next autofocus update or the next whatever. You get decent, raw files. You can't shoot the 240 over, you know, 800 ISO. The M9 is even less so. The lenses are excellent. You can also find old, cheap uh, Helios, even like the old Russian copies of the 39 millimeter thread. Lenses will work 
uh, with an adapter. Uh, you've got M lenses that Zeiss makes absolutely incredible M lenses, and then you've got the profiles in Lightroom to do your corrections. Just be, be deliberate about how and what you're shooting, which is what I love about the M240. It really forces you to focus on what it is you want out of how you like to shoot. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you have a certain way that you like to shoot, if you like to use a viewfinder, you've got an optical viewfinder. It's even with the S1's amazing electronic viewfinder, it doesn't really do all that well uh, compared to an optical viewfinder. You've got the rangefinder with focusing mechanism, which takes a little bit to get used to, but it's just very pure, uh, kind of out of your way. Uh, you you kind of choose to spend your time with things like products and while this is a product and it is very much it's superfluous really it's totally unnecessary but if you love to spend your time doing a certain things a certain way i don't really understand i don't really understand how to describe it but it's kind of like pairing choosing rather choosing to pair yourself with something it's just a very simple old school tool. It's kind of like why certain people like quality boots or like, or mechanical watches or things that are made by hand. It's, it's something to do with, if I'm gonna spend a bunch of money on something that's gonna go with me places, then I'm gonna use for a very, very specific thing or a specific task or a hobby then, you know, it really better be something that I look at and get inspired by. And after three plus years of the M240, every time I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's going with me. And we're going to get some photos of something today. There's worse ways to blow your money. If you ever find yourself in Brooklyn, check out Prospect Park. Bring your camera. Check out the Vale of Cashmere. I've got so much footage to get through. Uh, you keep watching, hopefully I keep getting better and get some good content out of this.